Okay, legit, I found what I want to look like. He drives a 2006 SL65 AMG. It's 25, what? 25. Look at that club. Yes, girl, get it. Slay. We have a lot of cars in here. Oh. How's my hair? How's my? Good. Is it okay? Is it? it is just no. <sighs> this is. Shh, I'm. It's, I'm on camera now. This is my show. This right here is. <sighs> frick. This here is. <clears throat> this here is a 2006 SL65 AMG. You know what AMG stands for? Oh my God. <laughs> Bro, pass me the nine iron. Pass me the nine. So right here, we got V12 by Turbo. There's some aftermarket rims on here. I'm gonna get rid of this golf club. How about that? This thing is insane. We're here to figure out if this could be a budget supercar. Brand new is $175,000. Thank you to depreciation because you can get this bad boy for $30,000 these days. And we are talking performance. Sam, guess how many foot pounds of torque this makes? Guess, just guess, wrong. 729 foot pounds of torque. Okay. <laughs> so, you know what? Let's just let's go inside. Let's take a look. Let's hear it. Let's rev it. And uh, let's go freaking play some golf, huh? That would have been a home run. Uh <laughs> This thing, like other AMG cars, is an animal. Because 604 horsepower which translates to a weight to power ratio of 7.44 to 1, concerned of 0 to 16 3.8 seconds, and a quarter mile in 11.9, which puts it right in the territory of cars like GTR 35, GT3 RS, Charger Hellcat, Ferrari California T, Model S P85D, Model X P90D Ludicrous, Ford RC TSV, Aston Martin Advantage S, ODR 8 V10, 05 Viper RSR T10, and Lambo Gallardo Spider. <sighs> What's crazy is that if you look online, you can find decent examples of this car for relatively little money. But all these numbers are just numbers. A supercar isn't only about ultra high performance, you silly goose. It's also a status of prestige, class, and craftsmanship. It seems like the SL65 AMG has the true workings of a budget supercar, but we need to take a closer inspection. Definitely this is the most dated part of the car right here. It just looks like it's from 2006. Screens have come so far since this car came out, so obviously this is going to age. Manual dual climate control zones here, and you got your phone keypad. We're not gonna call that. Contrary to popular belief, there's a ton of storage in the car. Little cubbies everywhere. One, two, Storage here along with your totally relevant six CD changer. Storage here. Storage in the armrest. This is actually my least favorite spot because it creaks when you put your arm down. Same with the other side. Moves the lumbar up and down, in and out. It actually has an upper lumbar, even if that's what you're gonna call it. Pulse, I think, is massage seating. And then there's this, which adjusts the side bolstering to keep you in place. Paddle shifters in the back here. This turns on the directional and the wipers. This is cruise control, which is strange. Electronic tilt and telescope with the steering wheel. There's also an adjustable roll bar control right here. This is to put the roll bar up. With the window controls, one tap, they go all the way down. Second tap, quarter window, goes all the way down. So now you're left with this big, no blind spot, am I right, Sam? Rev limiter at three grand when you're in park. You also have active body control, which controls the stiffness of the suspension and air suspension with adjustable ride height. 
and there's also a decent amount of cargo room considering the hardtop that folds down at the trunk. Plenty of space for a weekend getaway. So now we know it has the features of an ultra high performance vehicle, but how does it drive? Take a sip of my tropical hibiscus, watermelon, herbal tea, pineapple, orange, lemon, cold press certified drink. He's gotta stay hydrated, bro, am I right? He's so Too cool. slow. <laughs> I feel like this AC seat isn't doing anything. There's so many ways to adjust these seats. It's like, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's like 24 comfortable positions I can get in. It's so overwhelming. I just don't know how to adjust the lumbar. Oh my gosh, this is so cool! Oh my gosh! See how tight this turning radius is. Last time I checked, it was tight. Oh my god! Look at that! That's nuts! This is like not much of a wide road either. No, this is a skinny it. road. That's incredible. And since I'm in my douchebag dad shirt, got a rev in the tunnel. Ready? Okay, that sounded great. You can put your foot down all the way to the ground, but it doesn't give it the full power. You have to push it oh, like extra. Gradually, does it? There's like an extra little button underneath the throttle that when you push it all the way in, that's what makes it downshift and kick it into high gear. This thing is not loud enough, Sam. Even with the top down, I can't hear it enough. It's a V12, man. I, I love having a convertible. I feel like such a douchebag, but like. But it's fun. But it is, it is fun. This is. Douchebags have fun. Douchebags just wanna have fun. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, uh. The steering is precise and it's tight. I don't know about the steering ratio, it's just, it's not quick steering. It's very relaxed. Yeah. You know? Ooh, the sun is bright. It is. Flip! I forgot to put on my screen. This is really nice to drive. Give it the goose! Give it the goose. and I'm only turning 2200 RPM. This is meant for the Autobahn, you know? Uh, Here we are at the no-touch car wash. All right, this is great because it's so easy to put up and down the top. All you gotta do is just hold it like this. Hold it, this is to close it. You have purchased the basic wash. You may enter the wash if it is ready. The wash is now ready. Please drive it slowly following the entrance sign on the car wash. Thank My hair was wash. almost in the way. All right, so windows are up. Let's hope that it doesn't leak on us. This is sweet. So this is convertible, but it also has a pretty big moon roof. And there's also a little sunshade here too. And just like these little things are just what shows you that it was a, woo, well you can stop it halfway. Uh, <laughs> these little things are just what shows you that it was a $175,000 car in many. Bells and whistles. Technical difficulties. Yeah, it's a Mercedes, what do you expect? Successfully paired. Whoa! I don't know how the sound system is near, but the sound system's probably pretty good. You can feel a little air coming through on the sides. But overall, it's wicked solid. Hang on, Dad. Can I do a 60? Yeah. Okay. That was brutal off the line. That, I wasn't expecting it to be that quick off the line, huh? That's pretty good. Yeah. So that was... 0 5.3. Eighth mile was 8.86, not bad. I didn't do the quarter mile, so that's all right. And I'd not risk it on this room. No, 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 no. At first, I really wasn't a huge fan of how the SL65 looked. But as time went on, I started to appreciate the styling more as I accepted the car's age of a decade and a half. There's no doubt that Mercedes has a history of creating timeless designs, usually by going tastefully bold. And this car is no exception. 
The closer I looked at the car's details, the more examples I saw of Mercedes's highly regarded craftsmanship. Look at all that carbon fiber. This is an incredibly smooth engine. Very quiet. And what's cool is that you can tell this is a very expensive car. By the way, everything is isolated and rimmed in this to keep the sound in. And I didn't know until now, but look at this. These hood scoops are actually functional. Quick side note, if you watch Doug DeMuro, which you probably do, he's reviewed a couple of similar cars, not exactly the same. I can't find a solid review on this exact SL65 AMG. Even Tyler Hoover's bought a similar car to this, but not the same exact one. How do you like the passenger seat? It's fine, it's comfortable. I mean, I like the driver's seat, right? It's gonna affect... Jesus. Jeepers, jeepers, jeepers. Okay, if you allow the power to build gradually, all right? Yeah, this is a rotary. <laughs> we just roll up the top, so this is our first true test with the top up. And being a hard top, you have some advantages to being a soft top. You also have disadvantages, like it takes up more trunk room than a soft top does. But with the hard top, you have more chassis rigidity. You also have a more isolated ride for when you really just want to be in the quiet. Sounds like you're saying virginity. Rigid rigidity? Rigidity. Rigid rigidity. Chassis rigidity. I gotta say, it's really, really quiet for a convertible. It's quieter than my GTI, and I, that's, that's already a fairly quiet car. To put it into perspective, it's about as quiet as my Sam. Car. Yeah, I was gonna say about, yeah. it's about as quiet as Sam's uh, 06 Camry. Fantastic road tripping car. I'm very impressed. Seats are comfortable. They're a little stiff, but very supportive. They remind me a lot of the GTI seats, but much more configurable to your body. When it shifts into overdrive, the RPMs are nice and low, so gas mileage isn't horrible, although it kind of is horrible. The steering feels just very tight and connected to the road, although not a ton of feedback. Like I said before, it's just, this is just meant to be more of a grand touring car rather than a sports car. Oops. Let's put your foot down. It just, it feels like, honestly, it feels a lot like Sam's diesel. Our friend Sam has a, a has an LBZ Duramax and it's tuned, so it's making, you know, over 900 foot-pounds of torque. And the way this builds power is so similar to that. When you're accelerating, it just holds you in your seat. And you're like, okay, when's the power gonna let up? And it just keeps building and building and building. So, here comes the depressing stuff. A lot of people have reported ignition coil failure in these cars. And judging by the zero to 60 times that we recorded, I think this might be the case with our car too. I tested it and I tested it and I tested it and we kept getting similar times in the mid five second range. So I later told the owner about the zero to 60 times and he said that he replaced the coil packs before because they melted in some way. I'm not sure, but bottom line is that we didn't test a fully functioning SL65 AMG, so I cannot conclude that this is a true budget supercar. So, if anyone has a fully functioning SL65 and would allow me to make an update to this video, please reach out, because this car has a lot of potential. All right, all you people, thank you so much, and subscribe if you want to see more garbage. Later, lovelies.